Hi, my name is Caitlin and I'm a SNAP Guide Nutritionist for Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County. Today I'm going to be showing you how to cook with canned beef. I know cooking with canned beef or canned meat in general can be a little bit intimidating because of the way it smells and the, the way it looks. Um, just it definitely is not the same um, look and smell as regular fresh meat, um, but I promise it can be just as delicious in recipes. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to make some beef stew. This recipe uses a lot of canned ingredients, which is great because they are just as nutritional, nutritionally great as uh, regular fresh produce, but they're a lot more cost effective. So we're going to use a lot of canned um, options. I will say though, before we get started, when choosing canned, you want to make sure that you're choosing um, the low salt, reduced salt, low sodium option, whatever that says on the front of the can. Um, canned, um, especially produce, vegetables can come with a lot of sodium in them, um, which is very easy to exceed your um, intake that you need for the day. So make sure you're choosing that um, low sodium option. Um, so the ingredients that we're going to need today um, are listed all right here. I really like this um, recipe because it's very versatile. It's very easy to adapt, to add things, to substitute things, um, things like that. So today I'm actually going to be using a lot of substitutions. Um, that this recipe like doesn't call for, I'm gonna be switching them out with other things that either I had at home um, or that I just prefer. Um, and I'm also gonna be adding a few things as well just because it's how I prefer um, my beef stew. So for the first thing today, you need one tablespoon of vegetable oil, which I have right here. Um, you need one pound of lean ground beef. So what the recipe calls for, I, like I said, I'm going to be using um, this beef um, this canned beef, so I'm not going to be um, obviously using the lean ground beef. If you are going to be using that option though, make sure you choose the lean ground beef like I just said. Um, in order for it to be considered lean, you need 92% um, beef and then 8% fat. Um, so that'll be the numbers on the front of your package. That's what those mean is the percent of uh, beef in there or the, ground, the meat in there and then the percentage of fat in there as well. So like I said, 92% um, of, of the beef and then 8% fat. Um, so I'm going to be using this, like I said, this canned um, beef here. So then you need one medium onion. So I just have red onion at home, so that's what I'm going to be using there. You need two cloves of garlic. So I have these two cloves right here. If you don't have actual garlic cloves at home, you can use um, the jar, the mince, because we're going to mince it. You can use the um, minced garlic that comes in a jar. You can use that, or you can use um, garlic powder if you have that as well. You need one can um, of low sodium beef broth, and one can is going to be 14 and a half ounces. Um, so this is actually, this canned beef is actually beef and it has juices inside of it. So we're going to be using those juices as well. I'm not sure how much um, juices is actually in here. It says it's one pound and eight ounces is what is in this whole can. Um, so I'll measure it out and then whatever um, else I need, I will pull from this beef broth here. Um, so with the beef broth, I will mention, or any broth in general, you want to make sure you're choosing the low sodium options as well. The store that I went to did not have a low sodium option for this beef broth. Um, they had it for chicken, but unfortunately not for the beef. So I have to do the full sodium um, option here, but this is why it's just important to use low sodium options wherever you can, because there will be some times where you can't, and there really is no substitution for not using this. Um, I will say though, this uh, beef billion cubes, um, they are much higher in sodium than this beef broth is because I was going to use this but if you look at the back of this it says it's 940 milligrams which is 41 percent of your daily value um, of your sodium um, and that's just on the back of this so that's 41 percent and then this one is only 25 percent so and, I, and that's for your serving size of, of one cup and I don't think we're going to be using a full cup of this so um, definitely make sure you look at the options and choose if you can't choose a low sodium option um, choose whatever one is less in sodium um, for your options there and then you need one can of sliced carrots and again a can is 14 and a half ounces so I have the sliced carrots here um, I did not have um, the, the local food pantry was um, fortunate enough to give us these um, products to cook with um, so this did not come with a low sodium option in this particular vegetable um, so I'm gonna be showing you what to do um, to kind of help reduce the sodium um, in this um, product here. So one can of sliced carrots, and then again, no salt added green beans. Um, I purchased this one myself, and again, there was no option at the store that I went to um, to get the no salt added option. So again, I'm gonna be showing you what to do with that um, when we get started cooking. So the recipe actually calls for um, stewed tomatoes as well, one can of those. Um, I do not have stewed tomatoes at home, but I do have diced um, tomatoes. So that's what I'm gonna be using for the recipe today. It also calls for one teaspoon of dried basil. Um, again, I don't have dried basil at home, so I'm gonna be using uh, one teaspoon of this herb poultry seasoning, which should taste uh, just as good. Uh, last thing you need for the recipe is one cup of cooked egg noodles. Um, again, I don't have egg noodles at home, but I do have um, this 
uh, rotini pasta at home. It is an enriched pasta, which means it's not whole wheat. Anything that says enriched on the front of the box or um, in the ingredients list means that it's not whole wheat. Um, when they enrich something, it means that it's a refined grain, meaning that they take the whole grain, they take some of the nutrients and the fiber out of it, and then um, when they enrich it, they add some of those nutrients back into it, but they cannot add that fiber back into it. Um, so when choosing um, your grain options, my play recommends that you use uh, choose at least half of your grains um, for the day is whole grains, um, and that is because they cannot get, um, they cannot put that fiber back into it, and that's an important um, nutrient that you need. So. Um, make sure you're choosing, um, if I'm not choosing a whole grain option here, make sure you're choosing whole grain options um, throughout the day um, so that you can use um, whatever you have on hand there. I'm going to be adding a few things um, to this recipe. So one of the things I'm going to be adding is this um, whole kernel um, canned corn. I like um, corn in my um, recipe. I'm actually from Iowa, so um, we have corn a lot. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be using this corn. Um, on the front of this one, it does say no salt added on that. So this is um, a good example of what you're going to be looking for um, at stores. And then again, at the back of this can, it does say 0% um, for your daily value for the sodium. So this is definitely a good option um, for what you want to use there. Um, if you want to, I'm not going to today, but if you want to, you can also add um, potatoes to this recipe. Um, like I said, I'm not going to today, but if you are a potato person, um, go ahead and add those. Um, dice those up and add those as well. Um, make sure you wash them real good beforehand, though, um, and then add those to it as well. You might have to adjust the broth that you need, but it's a good option. If you want to make this vegetarian, um, obviously substitute the um, canned beef um, and then add in some lentils instead, and that's a good way to make this vegetarian and still have like a kind of like you know meaty consistency to it. Obviously, you want to set off this beef broth or vegetable as well um, to kind of make it vegetarian there. But yeah, that's all the ingredients that you need. Um, so let's get cooking. So before you get started with any um, cooking product or working with food at all, you want to make sure that you wash your hands for a full 20 seconds. Um, so I'm going to be doing that now. But you also want to make sure that you have a clean work surface as well. Um, you don't want to be cooking um, on a dirty work surface because it kind of defeats the purpose of washing your hands and keeping your know, food safety. Um, one other thing I will note though, and I will do this um, in just a second, is that obviously before I mentioned um, cleaning any vegetables that you have, rinsing those off. Um, I'm not cooking with potatoes, so I'm not going to be doing that. Um, and I did actually already wipe, um, rinse off the onion that I'm going to be using. Um, but one thing that not a lot of people think of is rinsing off your canned, um, the top two cans before you cut into them. So there can be a lot of, you know, germs, bacteria, whatever on the top of these cans. Um, and as soon as you puncture it with a um, can opener, all of that can get in the inside as well. And then you're pouring it out right on that lip of it where everyone touches as well. So just rinsing these off before you get started. All right, so I have the onions cut up here. Um, I diced them up. I had to do that off camera because they always make me cry um, when I do it. But I wanted to show you this um, trick that I learned from um, another educator at Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County. Um, her name is Hannah. Um, so I was watching a video that she had made previously and she showed me um, this little trick with garlic. So you take the clove um, and then you remove this skin from it. And then typically um, I would just cut off this um, brown end right here because I don't want to eat that part. Um, so typically I would just chop that off and then um, chop up the rest of this. But she showed me this trick where you actually keep it on there. And so turn it this way so um, it's on there. And then obviously keep your fingers away from the blade. Um, you slice it in little strips. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Yeah, so it looks, so the end is right there and then you drew um, slice strips down that way. So that way when you go to cut it this way, it all stays together and you can hold on to that. So then we'll turn it and slice the other way. There you go. And then now you got that end piece right there that you just throw away. And then it's all nice and diced up and ready to use. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how, um, that stuff I was talking about to how to reduce the sodium um, on the canned vegetables that you could not find the low sodium option for. Um, so I just have a strainer in my sink here and I'm going to take the um, vegetables that I have. So these are the green beans that I had. Um, obviously open it up um, and then I'm just going to pour them in this strainer here. And then I'm just gonna rinse them with water. And 
that is all you need to do um, in order to make them a little bit less um, sodium. There's still going to be more sodium than the no sodium or low sodium option, um, canned option. Um, but it is a better option than dumping um, all of them in there. It does rinse off a little bit of that extra sodium. So I'm going to do it for the carrots as well. Um, but the uh, corn doesn't need it. So I'm just going to dump the carrots straight in here because they're going straight in the pot together anyway after this. So. are ready to go. So as I mentioned before, um, you need some um, broth for this recipe, but um, the canned beef comes with juices as well or broth as well. So I need to see how much is in there so I know how much to add um, later on. So I'm going to open this can up. going to use this slotted strain spoon right here and I'm going to just dump all that liquid out and then I can see how much is in there so I know how much to use all right so your next step here is to take a four quart um, saucepan this is six quarts but the recipe calls for four quarts uh, four quart saucepan and um, turn that to medium high heat and then you want to add a tablespoon um, of that vegetable oil, oil into that pan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then you, once this is heated up, you want to add in um, your onions and your garlic. Um, if you are doing um, ground beef, the lean ground beef instead of the canned, um, add that in right now as well. So when the onions and the garlic are done cooking, um, you want to add the carrots, the um, green beans, the corn, and the um, tomatoes in there as well. And then you want to take your broth and put it in here. So this is the broth from that meat, and then I just added the rest of it to make 14 and a half ounces that, um, that I needed. Um, you want to add all of that in, and then you want to take that canned uh, meat as well and add that in as well. If there is any fat that came in the can, you want to make sure you remove um, that fat because, again, we're looking for those um, lean options. Once you get all the vegetables and the beef with the broth in there as well, you want to add um, your basil. So it's one teaspoon of basil that I'm going to be using. Um, like I said before, I'm using that herb poultry seasoning because I don't have any basil, but if you have basil at home, go ahead and use that. Once you have all your ingredients in here um, and you want to give it a good stir, um, you want to turn your heat up to high heat um, until it boils, so bring it to a boil. Um, once it starts boiling, you want to reduce your heat to low, cover the pan, uh, the, pan the pot, and then let it simmer for 10 to 15 minutes um, so we can get all those uh, flavors blended together. So as you can see, it is boiling now, so I want to turn the heat down to low. I want to give it a quick stir. And then I want to cover and like I said I want it to simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes while that is simmering I do have a pot of water I'm going on the back of the stove I'm gonna boil that and then I'm going to add the pasta that I need to it if you have leftover pasta from a dish earlier this week or um, anything else that you've used it for it's just sitting in the fridge this would be a really great recipe for you to throw um, that already cooked pasta into and use those leftovers so after about 10 or 15 minutes of this stew simmering, um, you want to take your cooked um, noodles and it's one cup of cooked noodles, stir those in. And then it's ready to eat. You can eat this plain just as it is right now, or if you wanted to top it with some low fat or reduced fat cheese, um, that's a great way to get some dairy into this meal as well. Or if you wanted to um, mix in some whole wheat crackers, um, like saltine crackers, something like that, that would also be a good way to get some whole wheat um, in, your, in your meal as well. This video is sponsored by the USDA. The USDA is an equal opportunity employer. For more information, tips, and recipes, visit our website, snapedny.org.
The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, provides nutrition assistance to people with low income. It can help you buy nutritious foods for a better diet. To find out more, contact 1-800-352-8401.